Welcome to the FMCG guys, live from Retail Media Summit UK by SMG and the Path to Purchase Institute. This is Daniel here. If you're listening to this on, podca- on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, just to let you know, you can also watch this on YouTube. So do follow the link in the show notes if that's the case. And I'm accompanied by n- no other than Tom Golden, who's the Digital Trading Insights and Analytics Director at The Very Group. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. How's the day going so far? Busy and very informative. Great, uh, great kind of vibe out there at the moment. Nice. Before we talk about the very group and everything that's going on there, which is pretty exciting, can you tell me a bit about your career in retail shortly? Yeah, of course. I mean, just as you were asking, it actually kind of two decades of retailing just flashed, <laughs> flashed in front of my eyes. You get these questions and you realise how old you are from exactly. one to the next. Exactly. That's definitely a consideration. <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to work for two great retailers in the, in the UK, so Marks and Spencer and, and The Very Group. Nice. Uh, I started out on the ground scheme through stores in, in M&S, which is such a great grounding into, into retail, because yeah. not only are you seeing how the proposition comes together in front of the customer, but you're working with some amazing leaders. I think kind of store managers are, are just such great kind of peoples and leaders. And then from there, I moved into, into head office, food, working for the food group across a variety of different roles across supply chain, tech transformation, wow. and then latterly uh, category management. And then the opportunity came up to go and work in Nunfood and work digitally, and join the very group. A bit of a homecoming for me, so I'm, I'm from Liverpool originally, I live in, live in London now, but a great opportunity for me to spend some time back yeah, up there, I had offices south, there. You went south for M&A's and then... And then back up north nice, again to, nice. to, to, to work for... Are you a Liverpool fan? Uh, I'm a Tranmere Rovers fan, so they, oh, okay. they tend to offend... That's them. from the other side of the Mercy River, right? Very good knowledge it is yeah, indeed, yeah. 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 Um, Don't ask me how I know that, but I know. <laughs> we, we were good once. <laughs> but yeah, and then, and then at the very group, I've worked across a series of senior roles across merchandising, trading, product, and then latterly uh, customer. So tell me about the very group, because I know it's like an amalgamation of like different online retailers that have existed for quite a long time. Yeah, and, and not everyone, if your viewers, not everyone will be familiar with the name. So... We're the uh, UK's largest headquartered digital pure play well, retailer and flexible payment solution provider. As you kind of said, we've got a rich history, so we've existed for over 100 years and we've evolved a lot over that, over that time. So we've gone from kind of bricks and mortar through to catalogue and then through to clicks with our, with our digital stores. Proposition-wise, we're an online department store. Nice. We offer over 2,000 desirable labels to customers across our two main retail brands. So that's Very and Littlewoods. And we've got over 4 million active customers. And the kind of the exciting thing working or being part of the Very journey is is our purpose really. So help our families get more out of life. Uh And we do that through building experiences that are based around ease, choice and understanding. So all of our plans ladder back to those kind of three things to delight our customers. And what's your scope within the Very Group? As Digital Trading Insights and Analytics Mm. uh, Director, it's a relatively new new role. So I was really excited when I got the opportunity to do it because for the first time it brings together data, digital trading and customer into one into yeah, one remit. So, so strategy, analytics, and PNL basically. E- e- exactly that. And, and you know, really boiling it down, it means we can bring insight and action together, which is kind of incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. We're using continuously kind of innovation in our plans, but you know, bringing insight and action together to build kind of plans that delight delight the customers. Nice. Yeah, you've said it in one sentence. I'm sure it's much more complex than that. So I know that you've just launched your own retail media network with SMG. So tell us a bit about that. Why, like, why did you launch a retail media network? The first thing to kind of say is actually we, we've been operating a retail media network for, for over a decade. And I was listening on another, uh, I won't name the podcast, but another podcast the other day. And they, <laughs> and they, they referred to us as an OG of, of kind of retail media networks. So okay. we've, been, we've been doing it for a long time. As being digital first makes sense. Exactly. And, and working with SMG over that period of time have been a brilliant kind of partner mm-hmm. with us. So we've got really solid foundations. Yeah. So it's been more a relaunch than a launch. Exactly. Yeah. So taking those existing kind of experiences mm-hmm. and capabilities that we've got and the brilliant base that we've got with, with SMG, taking that to market. And interestingly, internally, Jess uh, referred to this earlier in her keynote mm-hmm. that she gave. We've been concentrating on our, developing our own brand platform internally and we've been really leveraging customer data and our in-house creative and bringing those two things together. And we've seen some really exciting results as a result of it. Yeah. The next natural step was to take that to our brand partners through our retail media network and be able to join the, join the two things up together. And it's interesting because most retail media networks are in grocery, which is not necessarily the categories that have more penetration online. So what is like your value prop as like a non-grocer? 
you're like a foreigner here with full of people in FMCG and grocery. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody from a department store here is like an uh, exotic thing. Yeah, we're standing out at the party slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two things kind of stand out as our, as our kind of USP. The first is our customer data. Uh-huh. And the second is our in-house kind of creative capability mm -hmm. that we have. And we've got a really deep understanding of our customer. So we have that from a couple of reasons. First of all, as I mentioned up, up front, we're an integrated financial services provider and retailer. Mm -hmm. So what that kind of means in, in kind of hard data terms is on, on our customer, we have on average 500 plus data points, wow. which is, is very rich. And not only does it allow us to be able to target those kind of customers, it allows us to understand those customers really deeply mm -hmm. because we can, we can see what they shop. We're a department store, so they shop across the vast, that's the kind of uh, non-food, uh, non-grocery element. We, we, they're shopping across a vast array of brands and, and, and products. You know, we have over 150,000 products on site at one time. We can get a really good understanding of what our customers likely to do next yeah. and then make sure we put the right campaign in front of yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And is that like the main difference that you see with like your, your grocery, mm, I don't know if to say competitors or peers. Peers would yeah. be the more diplomatic word. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I think it's. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't say it's a kind of an advantage or, or not. I think it's mm. just a different. It's an opportunity to solve a different set of mm. problems for kind of customers yeah. and be relevant because of that. And I think you know, unlike a say a grocery, we don't have stores. So you know, there's an upside and a downside to to that from a retail media network perspective. But what we are able to do is is really get much kind of closer to closed loop yeah. capability yeah. Yeah. because of that customer data. Because that you can only buy online absolutely. at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. And what about like non-endemic brands? Are there many opportunities for yeah brands that you don't actually sell to advertise on your network? Yeah, I, I, that's going to be a really interesting one for us going forward. I mean, at the moment, we work within the brands that we partner with mm -hmm. day to day okay. as part of our kind of trading uh -huh. and we put in front of customers. I think non-endemic will definitely be something that we, we explore over the next kind of year and beyond. But I think also really important that we hold a really high line, high bar on what we put in front of customers from a relevancy perspective. You know, our, as a customer function, our kind of North Star is making sure that, you know, we can offer customers the most kind of personalized experience in shopping that flows all the way through to what kind of advertisements and we put in front of them. So it's certainly not about just kind of quantity over, yeah, over yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because that's the thing, like advertisements have like a bit of a negative association to them, but it can actually really enhance the customer experience if you're showing them products that they want to buy, you know, absolutely. even if they're advertised. A absolutely. And, and, you know, it, it's that kind of personal connection, because mm. if you know that a person, a customer's likely to need something before they've even worked yeah. it out. That's where you're kind of really turning up and, 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 um, and solving problems. So yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And being like a digital, digital first, which makes you pretty unique. Yeah. How you like embedding, you would know that because it's part of your scope, yeah. data science and analytics, this whole retail media proposition. Like how are you personally connecting that part to the other part? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, this is a topic I'm kind of really uh, passionate about, as you said, with, with, with my kind of role in, in, in mind. And I think we've definitely been on a journey with, with this one. That, you know, as we said, data is a key USP for us, yeah. but it's only a USP if we're able to kind of maximize and leverage, leverage it. And we, we kind of think about that in two ways, really, mm. in terms of the way that we work internally. The first is, is the right information available at people's fingertips to be able, you know, through kind of really neat dashboards, yeah. we use kind of Power BI to surface up a lot of yeah. that stuff, but bringing together a lot of those data points into kind of action ready, data and insights and then the second is for the very kind of bespoke specific tasks do have we got the right data library in place that people are able to self-serve and mm -hmm. get to the kind of the insights and the the answers that they need quickly so that's a kind of major focus for the role we've then got a load of really interesting use cases that kind of come to mind that stem from okay. from, from from that journey as well so you know I mentioned we've got 150,000 products on the, yeah. on the website at any one stage. You know, for our teams, managing that scale of assortment and equally making sure that all the information's on site and those product pages look great for customers is a, is a kind of continuous challenge for us. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're actually kind of leveraging technology at the moment to kind of help us approach and attack some of those problems. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, and that's the thing, one of the things with tech, right, that I think we'll go back to the fundamentals of like being like really customer focused, building great brands but enabled with all this technology so we don't have to look at like the small the small details no absolutely i mean it's kind of talked about in terms of kind of humans in and out of the of the loop on, on yeah. stuff we're very much 
humans in the loop and using mm. technology and data to make the job easier, yeah. not yeah. kind of replace human interactions because we still need that blend between kind of art and science. Absolutely, no, totally. I think that will be the winning combination. Actually, there's a part of me that thinks the science will kind of be there. It's a matter of like, but having the art will be maybe the challenge, having that vision really, that will be needed, I think. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, you know, if you take kind of basic but critical things like building assortments, yeah. you, definitely, you definitely see it there, that kind of piece between it. You can have all of the insights in the world, but you need that touch and feel yeah. to make sure that you're, you're picking the right trends. And having a purpose as well, as you said, that's super important because that's kind of like your North Star. Out of curiosity, so you're dealing with companies that are like probably in fashion, I imagine, quite a lot, consumer electronics. Yeah. So I'm curious to know because like when you, sp like in FMCG, everybody's like really like on to retail media. In some of these companies, because I have a network in these companies as well, you talk to them about retail media and they never have really heard about the t concept. Like how are you working around that and how are you like evangelizing? What kind of reaction are you getting to like, yeah. Or, or, or did they call it another name and you're just in that, in that front end, you call it differently? Yeah, well, it, well that was actually part of I mean, it's a really interesting point you raised because that's actually part of the reason we, we relaunched our retail media network uh -huh. was to be able to kind of go out and be able to start to engage on a broader basis with some of our supply bases. And you're absolutely right that with our brand partners, some are more used to dealing with, with retail networks than others. So there's no question that fashion is a major kind of growth opportunity mm -hmm. for us. Um, and, you know, we're seeing that at the moment with some of the campaigns that have recently kind of gone on site, new brands that we're working with, new campaigns, nice. leveraging our kind of new brand platform yeah. is really striking, striking a chord. So we'll definitely be doing more of that. Mm -hmm. And then in areas like electronics that you, that, that, that you referenced, more mature in terms of dealing with um, media, retail media networks, but actually an area that's ripe for kind of innovation. Yeah. And that's where working with SMG is really important in terms of kind of driving through that rich pipeline mm. of, of innovation. Yeah, maybe because these categories have a much higher penetration online. Yeah. They were used to doing it, but in a way that's not, and the FMCGs have come in later and maybe they're like finding more innovative ways. Also because like they struggle more to understand, understand the consumer and so on, they need more the data. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, and, and, and I think also back to the, the kind of the non-grocery piece, there is actually an opportunity to kind of cross-pollinate. So bringing fashion, actually, you know, we've seen example this year of a campaign, highly successful campaign with London, launched uh, bringing uh, fashion and electronics together nice. into kind of one uh, wearable wearable tech fashion oh, wow. uh, together so there are definitely those kind of opportunities as well uh, moving forward and we haven't mentioned ai yet yes. uh, we said tech but not ai was yeah. somewhere there so any things that you exciting things that you're seeing of use cases of gen ai deep learning yeah, I mean, a couple couple spring to mind. I mean, I think back to the kind of scale of assortment and making sure that we've got really rich content on, on site for kind of customers to be able to shop with ease. There's a really good fit with Gen AI there from a use case uh -huh. perspective. So when using kind of new modeling capability, which uses both kind of facial recognition to the model and also leverages the existing kind of product data that we've got to uh -huh. generate product description information to really embellish and make sure that the detail that's on site is great. And you can then start getting into some really cool stuff where you can start training it to the tone of voice that, that you want for your brand as well. So our brand platform for, for fashion, for example, is the House of Flamingo. We're able to kind of recreate that tone in the training of the model to make sure that it's consistent when the customer kind of mm. turns up on site. And then from a kind of deep learning perspective, I mean, uh, the kind of real fundamentals of retail pricing, uh, forecasting, availability, ordering, all of those activities in the very group are supported by deep machine learning. Okay. So most of those in-house built models that we've built alongside the business users and, and, and SMEs yeah. to make sure that A, we're building the kind of the right thing, but equally that we can kind of operate on a kind of test quickly, mm -hmm. fail fast or, or win, and then kind of scale, scale up kind of basis. But, you know, we're now able to produce our own forecast for, for each individual SKU that we, that we have on a daily kind of basis across the, the multiple faces by yeah. utilizing some of that machine learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is interesting, no? because it's the whole AI machine learning when there was the big boom, one thought that maybe like everything would, like creative would be done by AI. And I think that what one of the, a lot of people have taken is this more pragmatic approach, if you like, of predictability, standardization, which then lead, leads you, like as we were saying before, and that's like a really interesting one, right? The mind and the creativity work. So you mentioned this example of like 
getting fashion together with electronics, which would be very interesting. Is there any other, uh, any example of a brand that you've run campaigns with in your retail media network that you're especially proud of? The recent kind of autumn campaign, so it's the first time from a kind of very group perspective or very that we've been back on television with fashion for many years so that was a kind of great moment very well received by kind of customers and industry alike what we've been able to do is take is take that kind of brand campaign and then introduce it into retail media so visiting kind of very and uh, on-site and off-site you'll see that same platform now being leveraged to do kind of campaigns with multiple kind of fashion brands that we've worked with across september and then we've got some really cool stuff coming up for golden quarter coming up as well where we'll be broadening out across the whole of the department store leveraging all of our kind of strengths and we're bringing that together through some really good campaigns so if somebody sees it on tv how do they connect that to like your store we're very kind of clear with the very uh, branding as part of those brand campaigns mm. and then equally when we i mean a small example but we have a, a gift guide you know we know that for our families that we serve christmas time is a really kind of stressful intense time for them they've got to buy lots of gifts so a gift guide is a great thing that, that helps them kind of navigate oh, through cool. the kind of plethora of options hot trends all of those yeah. things but actually what we'll have in there is a qr code once you've scanned that once just by taking a picture of another image through the gift guide it'll take you straight to the product page on, oh, nice. on kind of very for kind of seamless shopping experience so another example of how, kind of how we join the two things up and, and making it easier for easy for people to shop no ultimately yeah. the less they have to think and the less clicks they have to do the better well that's a good one what's exciting for you in the next year lots <laughs> lots there's lots to keep us busy we're in golden quarter now yeah. which is our kind of peak period loads of new innovation and exciting stuff coming up so really interested to see how that kind of lands with customers and and, and with brand with brand mm-hmm. partners we touched a bit on earlier on on non-endemic brands and things like that there's so much kind of growth opportunity for our media network for vng it's going to be really interesting kind of really ramping up that that journey yeah. through the rest of this year and and beyond and then the other thing we, we, we it's the people that we've got kind of involved in this process. It's really exciting to see them have an opportunity to, to kind of really flourish and, and kind of show off the kind of high levels of passion and innovation that all of those people have got. So I'm really interested to see how the team kind of comes with us on the... Um, because on it is a transformation ultimately, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have the famous last question, which is with everything that you've learned in your career, which I thought was very interesting in, in retail, it's also seeing the strategic part, analytics, PNL, which is really like, I'm actually a recruiter by trade, and that's the kind of advice we give, like do cross-functional moves as much as you can. Anyway, what's that one piece of advice you would give yourself at the beginning of your career with everything that you've learned, the mistakes you've made, the w- when you've got it right, what, what's the one piece of advice? For me, it's about broadening as much as you can to really understand how kind of value gets created in the business that you're, that, that you're working on. Go as broad as you can. Yeah. And then it makes contributing at a senior level that much easier because you, you, you've got a greater understanding of how that business works and there are very few conversations that you don't feel yeah. that you can kind of offer a, offer a perspective. That plus say yes to as many things as you, uh, as you can is another piece of advice I'd, uh, I'd give.